Hey guys, so this is going to be the start of a reading vlog that's taking place in the middle of another reading vlog, so we're gonna see how my brain processes all of these things, but it is Tuesday and this is typically when I start a new week's reading vlog, but I'm in the middle of doing my Poppy War reread and Burning God vlog, uh, so those are happening simultaneously. So I'm gonna talk about the opposite books that I'm reading and hopefully we'll cross paths, I don't know. Um, but as far as book stuff goes, the book that I am reading currently is Where Dreams Descend, and it is possibly going to be my favorite book of the year. Just saying that right now. <laughs> um, we are reading this with my book club, and we just finished section two, which puts us at chapter, I think, 16 was where I stopped. Yeah. So we are this far into the book, and I am loving it. Like, it was pitched as Moulin Rouge meets Phantom of the Opera in a YA fantasy world, and like it's 100% that. I feel super nervous when I go into books that are pitched like things that I love, and Phantom and Moulin Rouge were like my entire teen years. I was obsessed with Moulin Rouge, like really, really obsessed with it. It was my favorite movie, probably still is my favorite movie, um, and this is like the perfect blend of it, like the opening scene where she comes down on like the chandelier. I was just like, it is Satine, she is descending like the diamond that she is, and it's amazing. Um, so I am loving it, every second of it. It is a masterpiece. It's gonna need to do some serious damage to not be a five-star book for me. So that's what I'm currently reading. I believe that I actually have footage from a vlog that I never ended uploading because I never really read anything that week. Um, but I'm gonna put it in here, and it is footage of, um, ooh, this little dude and Cricket getting some fan mail. So I'll put that in here. Hey y'all. So I just got a couple packages out of the mailbox that I want to unbox on here because I'm pretty sure they are things that I did not order, which means it came from one of you guys. So I just got this out of the mailbox. I don't think this is a book. So I am assuming, oh, okay, cats everywhere. <laughs> I also have this package, which feels like a book. So I'm gonna start here and see where this goes. <laughs> so this, oh, it's the troop. Oh, maybe I'll read this. Can you guys tell that I'm on like a super horror kick? Um, this is what a ton of people who love horror, this is what they love. Um, and I am weird about body horror. I think I prefer it because if it's gonna get a reaction out of me, that means like it's good writing. Um, but I've heard this is like the grossest thing ever and this is like pushing my limits. I know, I think this is set like in the Canadian wilderness, like an island in Canada or something. And I think it follows a Boy Scout troop who get infected by like a parasite of some sort, which is a huge fear of mine. So I feel like this is gonna like hit its mark. So who did this come from? Please let there be a note. There's a slip, slips. This is from Adrian Wilf Wilfong. Hi Chelsea, I hope you enjoy. I always enjoy your videos and love all the content you create. Couldn't help adding a treat for the kids. Hopefully they enjoy it. So I am assuming that's what this is. And I believe you have already lured a cricket in. <laughs> she has been sniffing this package. So, Albus is coming down the hallway. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. So I'm assuming this is also from you, Adrian. It is, thank you. Okay, let's, let's get the cat's opinions. I don't know how they feel about uh, noise makey toys because some of them are exciting, some are scary. So, oh my gosh. Cricket. We've got Willow in her little window seat here. We've got Cricket and Albus is staring at me from down the hallway. So let me get some scissors and put this how it's supposed to be. Okay, so I think this just goes on this section, I think. What do you think? Okay, here, let's adjust the cameras. What do you think? Is that exciting? What is it? Cricket? Is there a ball? Albus is literally just playing in the packaging, which is very fitting for cat lifestyles. But Cricket is a fan. Oh, we have a second contender. What is this? Oh, 
I think this is a hit for the children. We have our grumpy old lady just kind of observing over here, being the fun police. But I think it's a hit for the youngins. So thank you so much, Adrian. So the cats say thank you a lot. And I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. That means like the world to me. So um, I have that and I also have kind of a little unboxing thing to do for you guys. I just went to my PO box and I had some packages. I don't always unbox everything that gets sent to my PO box because it's kind of unsolicited things. If it's like a gift from one of you guys, I always include it. I always purposely put it in a haul and thank you. Um, but if it's like product placement stuff, I don't always include it on my channel because I technically am not obligated to do it. Um, but I feel like I should for this one box. So the first thing that I have is a package from Thrift Books, which I just cut open. I haven't looked at it yet. But when things come to me from thrift books, there's no option to like put a note in it. So I'm never gonna know who sent this to me unless you guys reach out to me. So I'm guessing the unbeatable squirrel girl. <laughs> what? I figured this was a graphic novel based on like the size of the package and like it was bendy. What is this? Marvel Now by North Henderson, the unbeatable squirrel girl, squirrel power. What? Uh, this looks like something. That's great. Oh my god. This artwork is hilarious too. Uh, I'm intrigued. So this is issues um, one through four. Okay. Thank you whoever sent that to me. I might read that tonight because I'm so intrigued by it. So that showed up in my P.O. box and this did too. And this just seems like something that I should uh, open for you guys. So I did cut open and look this far. This is as far as I got in the box and I basically read the note and I was like, I should unbox this in a vlog. Um, Cause it says, Chelsea, we love your channel. We're not a book box, but thought you might enjoy Julia from Forever Shine, which is what this box is. Um, and the theme, first of all, I like this. Uh, this is a good idea. Putting like the theme on the inside of the lid of the box. I don't know why I don't see more boxes do that, but I like this. So the theme for September is Embrace the Change. And we're just going to go through this really, really quick. It's not a book box, so I don't really know what I'm getting into. But basically what you guys just saw is all that I've looked at. So it looks like we have stickers, which are like super adorable. It's a little fall girl. Um, and then this, I'm guessing this is... Oh, this is cute. Okay, so this is basically all of the paper goods like combined into one little pamphlet thing. And I kind of like this. It makes me feel like I went to like a cool attraction. Um, so it kind of gives an explanation of the theme. It includes everything that's in this month's box. I'm not gonna look at this little playlist. There's quotes and then there's stuff to embrace the change. Like there's like writing prompts to get your brain a thinking. Um, and then a little note and it says Halloween is coming. So that's cute. So I'll keep this handy. We have candy. I'm a big fan of candy. Alrighty, let's... Ooh, this looks fun. This looks like a fun little fall box. Okay, let's go through. We got pumpkin spice soy wax melts. Always appreciated in my life. It smells like pumpkin. Ooh, actually, it smells really good. It's like a very authentic pumpkin spice scent. Like, it smells like the actual, like, uh, seasoning. Like, the spice that you would actually use to make pumpkin pie. So we have that. We've got suds and scrubs. Um, I'm guessing this is soap and it's a little pumpkin. I can't smell it because it's wrapped in plastic. I'm assuming that it smells like pumpkin. Yeah, there is pumpkin pie oil in it. So I'm assuming this is also pumpkin scented, which fine by me. Um, handmade with love. This looks like a little jewelry box. It sounds like a necklace or a chain. Oh, oh, this is super cute. I didn't mean to flick you guys off there. This is just a little bracelet and it's tiny, tiny, tiny. And it just has like three little orange, um, balls <laughs> on it. And this, okay, this is so dumb. This is the first time that I think I've ever received a bracelet in a box that is legitimately child sized and will fit my tiny wrist. Look, look, it fits my tiny wrists. I'm gonna wear this. I'm really excited over that. Okay, that's a win. Um, it looks like we have, ooh, stainless steel carnelian, carnelian bracelet. I'm assuming that is what this is, the stone. We have, ooh, these are nice. Oh, these are really cute, actually. Oh, I like these. We have little earrings that have owls and moons on them and they're just like super unique. Look how cute those are. They're like little tiny owls and the back of this disc is blue. And it's like a little, I don't know, like resin cut thing. Look how cute those are. So that's super cute. Okay, what's this? Open when an unexpected change comes your way. 
I don't know when that's gonna be. Should I wait to open it? I'm intrigued enough to open it. I can't wait for the next chapter. It has a little card. And there's, oh, this is, this is interesting. Oh, this is cute. So life threw you a curveball. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna save this. It's gonna be cute. I don't know what is in the little bag that's attached to it, but I'm gonna use it because this was an unsolicited thing. So I'm gonna use this to my own abilities. I don't know what this is. There's a little square thing wrapped in here. I don't know what they are, but it, I feel three cylinders. We'll open it when an unexpected change comes my way. Okay, ooh, we got more candy. We have a September mood tracker. This is actually really cool. Um, I'm slowly getting back into bullet journaling and this is the exact thing that you can literally just tape into your bullet journal with washi tape and you don't have to draw one out. Brilliant, okay, fan of that. Um, we have a card for Pandora's Collections. Don't know what that goes to yet. Um, we have, what is this, Flawless Claws? What is this? Oh, they're nails, oh man. Okay, how do I, what do I? Voucher is for one set of free custom gel nails from Flawless Claws. Oh, that's pretty nifty. Ooh, these will so come in handy. We got hair ties, or I mean, some people just wear these as bracelets, but they're just elastics, super cute. And these are from Accessories by Marie. So this is just a cute little fun, like girly, feel better box. We have a flannel scrunchie, heck yes. This is from Creativity Cake. And this is like a really soft, thick, like woven flannel material. And it's all scrunchy. Love it. We have, ooh, this is pretty. Is this a print from Natalia Durheim? Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Is that an actual print? I think so. And I feel like this will translate really well from fall to winter because it looks like holly berries too. This is gorgeous. So we have an art print here. A tube of... I'm assuming this is tea. This is fall tea made by Simply Raw Beauty. So we have a tube of tea, fun. So that is everything that came in the box. That was a fun little unboxing. Those are just cute little like pick me up type things. So that's a cute little box. I'll leave that linked down below if you guys would like to check it out. Uh, this isn't like a rep thing or anything, but there you go. Okay, we're off to a long and lengthy start to this vlog. I'm gonna check in later on this week when I have more things to talk about. All right. Uh, so when did this vlog start? I know it was more than a week ago, uh, probably closer to two or three weeks ago. I don't, I don't know why I just didn't have updates. I have updates for you guys, but I just, I could not get myself to sit down and film. Life has been busy recently and I just have not been in the mood, but here we are. I've been filming a whole bunch of videos today. So I'm going to give you a reading update. I have more things to open for you guys from my PO box. Um, but let's get to books first because I feel like a majority of this vlog is just me opening things. So let's talk about things that I've actually read. Um, I'm pretty sure the last update that I had, I probably only had one reading update if I remember correctly. And I had just started Where Dreams Descend. Oh boy, we're way past this. This is definitely more than a two week long reading vlog. Um, so we finished this with my book club, five stars, masterpiece cannot wait for book two. Didn't know that this was going to be a series. Probably should have known that going into it. But this is everything that I wanted it to be. Like I, when I heard it's a mashup of Phantom of the Opera and Moulin Rouge in like a YA fantasy form, I was so nervous because that sounded way too good to be true. This is one of those rare occurrences that it lived up to the hype. I'm obsessed with this book. Five stars. I don't know how else to really talk about it without spoiling it. I just loved it so stinking much. Like it was perfectly balanced between Phantom and Moulin Rouge without feeling like it was copying either of those things. And it introduced its own whole world and magic system. And I just, I have so many questions. This is one of those books where you kind of get a whole list of questions as you're reading it and then it doesn't answer any of them and you're just left hanging. So for those of you who haven't read this yet, just know, this is book one of a series and you get zero answers. But man, was it fun asking the questions, I guess, and not having them answered. I don't know. So I loved this. We finished that. We also read the romance book since I last talked to you guys. And that was Bittersweet by Serena Bowen. This is book one of the True North series, which is personally one of my favorite romance series of all times. I've read this book alone probably five or six times since I discovered it like a year ago. 
This series is just a really good comfort read for me, specifically going into the fall season, because it just gives you all of the like small town farm family apple cider feels that like you want at the beginning of fall. I adore this series. I've recommended it endlessly to you guys, and I'm sure you guys are sick of me talking about it, but I convinced the entire group to read it this month, and most people really liked it. I'm a big fan of Griff, even though he's grumpy. This is kind of the series that I generally hold my small town romances like as a standard to. This is what I come back to. This was probably my sixth time reading this book, and I loved it just as much. I love it so much. Is it perfect? No. Do I enjoy myself every time I read it? Yes. If you're looking for a good fall romance, this is one. Okay, I'm pulling up my Goodreads because I know I'm gonna lose track of what I've been reading because I've also been reading through, like I said, the Poppy War books and I'm on The Burning God right now, but we're not gonna talk about that. That's gonna be a completely separate vlog. So I read Where Dreams Descend. Ooh, I've got a DNF for you guys. And Kim, I'm so sorry. My dear friend Kim, who I'm going to uh, mention a lot in upcoming videos because she's introduced me to an entire new hobby and lifestyle. Um, but one of her favorite authors is Jodi Ella Malpass and Mal Malpez? Malpass. Mal Malpass. I have no idea. Um, this is an author that is like an OG romance author. I'm sure you guys have all seen the cover of this man or any of her other books. She is just a well well-known romance author who's been around for a very long time. And I have always wanted to read from her, specifically these books, because Calla Lilies are my favorite flowers. So every time I see this cover, I'm like, I should pick that up at some point. But I just never have. I don't know why. There was no reason. So my friend recommended it to me because she is a huge fan of this author, of the series in general. I picked it up. I despise this book. I have learned since I've started reading romance, like a couple years ago, um, I'm fairly picky with like the male protagonists in a lot of romances. They can be very damaged. They can be very broken. Um, this one had so much non-consent in it that it was something I, I personally couldn't look past. I know this is a very well-loved series and I mean don't, no disrespect to anybody who loves this series. I just could not look past the amount of um, lack of consent there was just, there were so many scenes that I was just uncomfy reading. And y'all, I've read some smutty smut. Like, I, without going into too much detail, like, there's very little that can turn me off of books. And this one was just, it was cringy and weird and for no reason whatsoever. Like, he would just out and out lie to her. There's just, there's something between being just kind of like a douchey alpha male character in that type of book versus just being obnoxious for no reason. And I know there are always reasons. They always get explained in books. And this has since been explained to me. It didn't excuse it to me though. That was the issue. There were so many times that it was just red flag after red flag after red flag. And I feel like as a 30 year old person, even though someone can be very mysterious and very alpha male, um, there should still be some sort of communication. When you ask them a direct question and they lie to your face and you, both of you know that they are lying to you, that's a red flag that I personally can't look past. Like, why was he lying about his age? There was no legitimate reason why he wouldn't tell her how old he was. And there was just, there was just a lot of issues that would have been solved so easily with communication, which is just something that just bothers me in romance. Sometimes I can look past it. This was not one of those times. I despise this book. I made it to like 60% of it before I just gave up, to be honest. I wanted so badly to like it and I felt so bad because Kim loved it so much and I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't push through. So that was a DNF. <laughs> so since I finished uh, Bittersweet, I wanted to go back to a small town romance. I have read through many of them. So it's getting to be slim pickings for me of like the very specific type of contemporary romance set in a small town that I'm looking for. Pretty much that feels like this. Um, so I've read through all of the Jameson Valley by Devney Perry, but that was it for Devney Perry for me. So I wanted to go to a lot of her backlist because almost all of her books are small town. Um, so I read Tattered and Timid, books one and two of the Lark Cove series and uh, I'm waiting on book three. Scribd just locked my account, so I've got a while before I can get to book three. Um, these were exactly what I was looking for. They're small town feels, but they're emotional. They're fairly draining at points, like they're heartfelt. They just give me all of the feels that I was looking for. I just really like contemporary romance in that setting, and this was the exact type of book that I was looking for, so I gave both of them four stars. Um, 
in true Dovney Perry fashion, it kind of gives you a really good like cozy small town feeling with like a romance that's like building, but um, you generally get both sides of the story. Like you generally get perspectives of both the guy and the girl, and usually one of them has some sort of trauma in their past that they need to overcome. Is that the most stereotypical romance plot ever? Yes. Do I read it endlessly? Also yes. Love it. So. I read both of those. Keep in mind, all of these romances that I was reading were in between uh, my reads of The Poppy War and The Dragon Republic and now The Burning God because Lord knows I needed a palate cleanser after those books. If you guys have read that series, they are uh, damaging and traumatizing. So I needed some romance in between. The last book that I picked up, I should have done more research. Uh, learn with me in case you've never read Emma Scott. Emma Scott. I now know is an author who is known for ripping your heart out and stomping on it. I know this now. I did not know this when I chose to listen to this while at work. Mistake number one. Um, so I should have known going into this what it was going to be. And I kind of, I knew from page one, I knew what was going to happen in this book. Did I think I was going to be emotionally prepared for it though? I did. I was not. So, um... This is a beautiful freaking book. I haven't decided what I want to rate it. I feel like I should give it five stars, but I'm going to let it sit with me. If it's going to be one of those books that is going to stay with me, it's going to be a five star read. If I start like losing track of the characters and stuff in like a couple weeks, it'll be a four star. It's up there though. I recommend it. Um, this follows Casey and Jonah. Casey is a like a rock star chick, which is not my genre. I will preface this by saying it. I'm not a huge fan of the rock star romance scene. Um, but she is the lead guitarist in a new and up and coming band. Um, and she ends up getting drunk one night and crashes on the couch of her limo driver, who is Jonah, who has a heart condition. We all know where the story is going. Okay, I should have seen it coming. It has a lot of beautiful imagery in it, like in your head imagery, as in Jonah does a lot of glass blowing and glass art, which was a main theme in this book, hence the cover. Um, this book broke me. I haven't cried from a book like this in a very long time. It was very unattractive in a public space. Lesson learned. Emma Scott will make you cry. Um, so we read that as well. And I also didn't know this was technically like the first book of kind of a duology. So I'm working on book two as we speak. Um, I feel like it's also going to be just as damaging. And I didn't learn my lesson because I started it at work. And it started at the end of that book, which was the sad part. Okay, so that's what I've been reading. Let's get into some more things that were sent my way. This one, we cut it open, was sent to my P.O. box. Ooh, there's two in here. I see Marvel. Is this gonna be... You're seeing it first. Is this... Okay, who is sending me the Squirrel Girl books? Um, I... Okay, okay, I need to start these then. Uh, in earlier in this vlog, you'll have seen me open the first volume of this. Now we have, okay, and, and these are all coming from thrift books, so they don't have a note. So I have The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, like I'm the only squirrel in the world. Um, and then we also have a Squirrel, You Really Got Me Now. In addition to the other one that I unboxed, who is sending this to me? I have so many questions. I'm gonna read them tonight though. I'm excited. Is she gonna throw this squirrel? She has a squirrel like balled up in her fist. Is this her weapon? Okay. Okay, I'm intrigued. Also, she has the Avenger symbol on her. Is she an Avenger? What is th I mean, this is Marvel. It is a Marvel. What? What is this? I have questions. Please get in contact with me if you're the one sending those. Because thank you. I didn't know I needed those in my life. Okay, next was also sent to my P.O. Box. We've cut to the top open, but I haven't seen it. What is it? It's yellow. I haven't looked in because this is a very tight package. Okay, this. Oh, wait, hold on. We might have a note. <gasps> we have a note this time. Wait, hold on, that was the wrong way. Chelsea, it has a hello sticker, okay. Okay, this is looking more promising because uh, it has a oh, it's an elephant, who is this? This is from Laura in Canada. Thank you, Laura. She says, this book was a cover buy, but I ended up loving it. And while I was reading it, I kept thinking you might really like it too. Okay, make sure you read the map is at the bottom of this one. Thank you, Laura. Okay, now I'm intrigued. It's very bright yellow from what I can see. What is this? I can see why you thought I would like this. Kill the farm boy. We're gonna need a bigger goat. You're right. 
This Is Me. This is by Delilah S. Dawson and Kevin Hearn. A laugh out loud funny fusion of Monty Python esque humor and a whimsy of Ala Terry Pratchett's Discworld. I haven't heard of this. I need this. Oh my gosh. It's reminiscent of The Princess Bride and Shrek. We'll have you laughing out loud until strangers begin to look at you oddly. Okay. So this sounds like it's going to be like satirical fairy tale. Once upon a time in a faraway kingdom, a hero, the chosen one, was born. And so begins every fairy tale ever, ever told. This is not that fairy tale. There is a chosen one, but he is unlike any one who has ever been chosen. There is a faraway kingdom, but you have never been to a magical world quite like the land of Pell. There, when a quest goes painfully awry, it's up to a talking goat, a mighty warrior who resents her chainmail bikini. Thank God. An assassin with a fear of chickens, a cursed fuzzy-tailed bard to set everything aright. Beset by evils and the Dark Lord Toby, this intrepid company journeys towards the most peculiar happily ever after there ever once upon a time. This sounds so good. Oh my god. You're right. This is something that I needed in my life. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to read this. Thank you so much, Laura. Ugh, I'm sticking your note in this book. I am so excited to read this. This sounds fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay. And the last one is another thrift books thing, which means it's not going to come with a note at all. This is, oh, you reached out to me though. Okay. This is off of my wish list. This is Comics Will Break Your Heart by Faith Erin Hicks. Um, and this is a YA contemporary. Oh my God. It's a library edition. I haven't, oh, I haven't opened a library book in so long. It sounds so good with the plastic and it also, it has a card catalog in it. Okay. This is just giving me like all the serotonin right now. Feeling like a library bound plastic wrapped book is making me feel good. Okay, the book itself. This is why a contemporary, I believe, following a girl whose grandfather wrote a smash hit comic series, Tomorrow Men, um, and he sold his rights to his co-creator a long time ago, which means her family got nothing from this franchise that got super, super popular. And then it follows her falling in love with the grandson of the other creator who got the rights. So it sounds great. It sounds nerdy, which is like, okay, this is my like go-to comfort read in YA these days. It's YA contemporary with nerdy things in it. That's why this was on my wish list. So thank you so much. This actually came by way of somebody who sent me a message on Instagram saying they got me something off my wish list and it was coming my way. So this is from Barb. Thank you so much, Barb. And thank you for reaching out to me and letting me know that this is from you. I'm assuming this is from you. This is the only thing I can think of off of my wish list that I've received recently, unless it hasn't come yet, in which case I don't know who I'm thanking. I'm assuming this is you though, Barb. If that's the case, then thank you. Um, so those are the books that I have acquired since the last time I talked to you guys. These are the books that I've read. That is my update for this vlog. Hopefully I can just wrap this one up and finally start a new one fresh. Anyway, that's going to be it. I hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you guys in my next one.